In this video, we're going to go through a proof by mathematical induction example question. Now this is a topic which students typically find quite confusing. There's a few steps involved, but I really encourage you uh, to watch this whole video if you have struggled doing these questions before, because I'll go through each of the important steps and hopefully then you can use these steps in whatever question you're trying to tackle. Okay, so the proof in this question is we want to prove by mathematical induction that this left hand side here is equal to this right hand side and we want to prove that it holds for all values of n that are positive integers. So that's one, two, three, all of the positive uh, whole numbers. Okay, so let's have a look at our solution. The first step is to also always state our proposition and our proposition p of n is just going to be the proof uh, in the question. So we just say let n be our statement or our proposition and we just rewrite the proof. Okay, and we want to prove that this holds for uh, all values of n which are positive integers and uh, that first step is just to pretty much state what we're trying to do in the question. Now after that we want to do our basic step. Now our basic step is to prove that this left hand side equals the right hand side for our first value of n. Now we want to see that n holds for all of the positive integers. So the first value there would be 1, the first positive integer. So that's why we use n equals 1 for our basic step. So we just sub n is equal to 1 into both sides of this equation. So if we have a look at the right hand side, if we subbed 1 in for n, we just get 1 minus r to the 1 plus 1. So 1 minus r squared, and we'd still have over 1 minus r here. And then 1 minus r squared is a difference of 2 square. This is 1 plus r, 1 minus r. You can see here the 1 minus r's cancel out. So we'll just have 1 plus r. And that is what the left hand side would be. If we had, if n was 1, we just have 1 plus r to the power of 1. So we have proved that the left hand side equals the right hand side for our basic step. So we can say, so p of 1 holds. Okay, so that's the proof of the basic step. So if p of 1 holds, well, does then, does then that does that then mean that any value of n holds? And that is what we do in the inductive hypothesis step. So the inductive hypothesis step, what this is saying is, let's assume that p of k holds for some value of k, which is greater than or equal to one. And in other words, we want to assume this equation here, and it's the same equation as the one in the question, but we just replace n with k and we just write out that equation, which is what we've done uh, right here. Now this is this is all we need to do in this step, in the inductive hypothesis step. Uh, we're going to use this, this equation here later on, so it is quite important that we do state it and make this assumption. The assumption is very important. Okay, now we use the inductive step. This is the, the big step in the question, which uh, requires you to have some algebra skills and what this inductive step is to show that p of k plus 1 the next value up from k to see if that holds and if that holds uh, we can then draw our conclusion that the proof is uh, a is a successful proof so in this step here what we want to do is we want to write the same equation as above as this one here but we go to and instead of k, we go to k plus 1. So it's going to be 1 plus r, so this is the same as this, and then r to the k, and then r to the k plus 1, and on the right-hand side, we replace k with k plus 1. That's what we have done here. And this is the one we want to prove. So I will put a little star next to this because uh, this, is, this is the key line here that we want to prove. Okay, so if we start from the left-hand side of this this equation, this, this left hand side here, our goal is to use algebra with this left hand side and to finally, or to hopefully finally make it equal to the right hand side uh, using some assumptions that we've made above. So what we can do here is we can realize that one plus r plus r squared plus r to the k, this whole section here, we did have some expression for this and it's from the line up here. That's 1 minus r to the k plus 1 over 1 minus r. We, we already know that this highlighted yellow bit here is equal to this. So if we work with this left-hand side, we know that this section here 
is just this here from the assumption line uh, of p of k. So I've replaced I've replaced it with this, and then we still have our plus r to the k plus 1. That's by our inductive hypothesis. Now, from here, we need to use some algebra. So uh, with this r to the k plus 1, I want to try and get this with the same denominator, a common denominator. So I'm going to multiply it top and bottom by 1 minus r, which is why I have the 1 minus r and the 1 minus r. And now that we're adding the two fractions with a common denominator, we can bring them all over the same denominator, which is what we've done from this step to this step here. Now, on our top lines, we're going to have 1 minus r to the k plus 1, and then plus r to the k plus 1 minus r times r to the k plus 1. And I'll, uh, I'll show you the algebra steps there, but you'll notice that the minus r to the k plus 1 and the positive r to the k plus 1, they cancel out. Just with your indice laws here, if we have uh, r multiplied by r to the k plus 1, we know that we add the powers. So this will become r and then 1 plus k plus 1, which is k plus 2. So that's where this k plus 2 here came from. Now from here, we know that k plus 2 is just k plus 1 plus 1. And hopefully you, you, you stop here and you realize oh, our answer, what we're up to here, this is what we wanted our answer to be in this step. It's 1 minus r to the k plus 1 plus 1 all over 1 minus r. And once we have done that, once we have used algebra with this left-hand side to get an answer which was the same as what we wanted on the right-hand side, we can say, hence, k of uh, p of k plus 1 holds as well. And then our conclusion step is our last one, and it is a very important one. It's, it brings it all together. It says, by mathematical, conduction, uh, by mathematical induction, we can conclude that... Uh, and we have our proof here holds for all values of n because we know that p of 1 holds. And then if we made the assumption that p of k holds and p of k plus 1 then held. So that means uh, it will hold for all values of n, which are positive integers. Okay, so well done if you got to the end of that video. This is a, this is a classic um, mathematical induction question. Um, that your question that you're doing might look a little bit different to this, but the steps are the same. You, you need to state your proposition. You need to have the basic step. You need to have your inductive hypothesis where you assume P of K. And then you need to show that P of K plus 1 holds. And then up to there, you, you, you haven't actually done much work yet. You've just used the template. And then this is where all of the marks are. This is where you need to use algebra and you need to get this left-hand side to try and equal the right-hand side. Okay, so I think if you try maybe three or four of these questions, you should get a good feel of this topic. So good luck.